Here are 15 mysterious and complex riddles to test your brain. You have 10 seconds to solve each of them for yourself. Good luck. We'll start with the thumbnail as a practice round. This image shows a restaurant with a few customers. However, something terrible has happened in the woman's bathroom. Using the clues in the image, can you guess who the killer is? You have 10 seconds to figure out the answer. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. You may have spent some time looking at the location of the wound, the food on the customer's plates, or whatever other small hints you thought held the answer. The hint that holds the answer is more obvious than you'd think though. The woman at the table is the killer because only she would be allowed in the woman's restroom. Had a man entered, staff would have noticed and the crime would have not been so easy to pull off. Number 15. My psychotic brother. A few years ago, my brother went crazy, stabbing my sister and attacking my parents before the police were able to subdue him. He was ultimately sent to a mental hospital, and my family has never visited him. Recently, he sent me a letter. When I found the letter, it was postmarked the day before, so I opened it. Inside was a strange note that read, Tonight, the wind blows colder still. All I know is darkness, never light. The pain will break strongest hearts. My dreams still escape my grasps. I couldn't make sense of the cryptic letter so I took it to my mother. After she read it, her face went pale and the note fell from her hands. She ran to the door and began screaming, Why? You have 10 seconds to figure out the answer. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. The confusing letter actually had a hidden message. The first word of the first sentence is tonight. The second word of the second sentence is I. The third word of the third sentence is will. And the fourth word of the fourth sentence is escape. Which means the hidden message read, Tonight I will escape. Number 14 Prisoners There is a prison with a hundred prisoners. The prisoners are kept in separate cells and have no way of contact. Each day the warden picks a prisoner at random and takes them out to the lobby, even if they have been picked before. In the lobby, there is a single light bulb. Sometimes when the prisoner enters, the light is already on, but sometimes it is off. The prisoner is given the choice to flip the switch and turn the light on or off. They are also given the choice to say, every prisoner has been brought to this light bulb. If the statement is true and every prisoner has been to the light bulb at least once, the prisoners are set free. If the statement is false, they are all executed. Therefore, a prisoner would only say this if they knew it to be true. One day, all of the prisoners Prisoners are allowed to meet and form a strategy to assure their freedom. What is the strategy? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This riddle has various solutions which include math and thinking outside the box. The best and most simple solution though is to assign one leader and follow the rules of the strategy. Let's say they assign Ali as their leader. Ali is the only one allowed to turn the light off when she enters the room. When the other prisoners enter the room, they turn the light on, but only once. If they have already been in the room and turn the light on, they do nothing. This means that when Ali enters the room and the light is off, there is a prisoner that has not had a turn in the room. In this case, she leaves the light off. When she has entered the room with the light on and turned it off 99 times, she knows that every prisoner has entered at least once and can make the assertion to release the inmates. Number 13 House Party One night at a house party, the lights suddenly went out and a scream was heard. When the lights flashed back on, a man was found lying on the floor in a pool of blood. Five friends that had accompanied him to the party were standing near him. Their names were Aman, Anurag, AJ, Alex, and Adetia. Before the victim died, he wrote four numbers on the floor in his blood. Those numbers were 4, 5, 8, and 11. Who killed him? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
If you guess Aman, you're correct. This is a very popular one though, and it can be changed depending on the names of the five friends in the story. The numbers the victims wrote are the months of the year. Four is April, five is May, eight is August, and 11 is November. When you take the first letter of each of these months, it spells Aman. Seems like it would have just been easier to write out the name, but that wouldn't make for a very clever riddle, would it? Number 12. The Hacker The computer system of a chocolate company's office was hacked. An investigation shows that the hack was done by one of the 1,000 office employees. Detective Alex Parrish narrowed it down to four culprits. Each of them gave three statements two of which are true and one of which is false. The statements are as follows. Hopkins 1. I have not hacked the system. 2. I've never hacked anything in my life. 3. Ellington did it. McLaughlin 1. I have not hacked the system. 2. The network attack was done from the office. 3. I hate Shelly. Brady 1. I have not hacked the system. 2. I have never met Shelly in my entire life. 3. I know Ellington did it. Shelly. 1. I have not hacked the system. 2. I know McLaughlin did it. 3. I used to be friends with Brady. Detective Parrish immediately arrested the hacker. Who was it? 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. Did you guess the hacker was Brady? Sorry, but that's not correct. Many guess that Brady was the hacker because it seemed that he lied about knowing Shelly. While this may be true, it doesn't have anything to do with the investigation. The hacker was McLaughlin. First of all, it is never stated that Detective Parrish disclosed any details to the suspects. So the fact that McLaughlin knew the hack was done from the office shows that he has inside information that only the hacker would. He also states that he hates Shelly, who admitted in her statement that she knew McLaughlin did it. Clearly, he hates her because she caught him in the act. Number 11. Innocent Adam Adam killed his wife in front of many people, yet no one has the power to accuse him and send him to prison. Why? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The reason Adam can't be accused is because he is the executioner. His wife committed a crime and he executed her in front of a crowd, which is common. He was just doing his job, so he can't really get in trouble for it. The people in the crowd likely agree with why his wife was killed and don't have any power to dispute the action. Number 10. License Plates Detective Isolate was investigating a difficult murder case in Chicago where the killer had left no clues behind. The victim was a wealthy politician and those present during the murder were Andrew, the butler, Sarah, the wife, Emily, the cook, Jamie, the 18-year-old daughter, Shane, the driver, Dorothy, the maid, and Daniel, the gardener. Isolate was stumped until he found a message from the killer in an advertisement for license plates in the morning newspaper. Detective Isolite solved the puzzle and arrested the killer. How did Detective Isolite know that the ad was a clue for him? Using the code featured in the ad, try to find out who the detective arrested. Here's what the ad said. Plates for sale. W05 NWO H13 HSR. O zero five EMB D zero eight UNE U one zero HTY and zero four BRE and one six TTE I two six LHC T one zero AEE I two six CNA X two two VDA ten nine eight seven six five four three two one. The first answer is easy. Detective Isolite knew this message was a clue because the first letters of the plates spell out who done it X, which was meant to be a challenge. The second answer is more complex though. If you read the last three letters of each plate number from the bottom up and right to left, you get 
Advance each letter by the numbers shown. This refers to the letters at the beginning of the plate. For example, you would advance W by 5 letters to get B, advance H by 13 to get U, and so on. In doing this, the message reveals, Butler did it. Number 9. Second floor. My wife and I took a much needed vacation in England. The flight from New York to London was long and exhausting, so after some sightseeing, we just came to our hotel and got into bed. It's the middle of the night now, and we were just woken up by some noises outside. I looked down from the balcony, and some cops yelled up that there was a robbery and murder on the second floor. I can see that the stairs and elevators are locked up. And since we are on the third floor, we should be fine. I'm really tired, so I'm going back to bed. I hope they catch the guy. Will the couple be safe? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You're probably thinking that the robber ran up to the third floor before the entryways were blocked and the couple is in danger. Well, you're half right. The couple is not safe. However, it's not for the reason you're thinking. The first floor is known as the grand floor, which means the second floor is referred to the first floor and so on. Therefore, the couple is technically on the second floor and the murderer is trapped there, meaning they are in danger. Someone really needs to wake them up. Number 8. Housewives One day I was riding my bike around town when I stopped near a shopping center and overheard the conversation of two housewives that were standing outside. Housewife A Did you hear about the house that burned down last night? Housewife B Yes, a woman died in the fire. I wonder how it started. Housewife A It was arson. Housewife B Wow, that's scary. I'm worried, aren't you? Housewife A, of course not. But do the police know who did it? Housewife B, no, they haven't released any information on their investigation. That's all I heard before I got scared and cycled away. Who committed the crime? Hint, it was someone present during the story. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Again, in this riddle, the criminal gives themselves away by sharing some inside information. Housewife B made it clear that she didn't even know it was arson. She also stated that investigators had not released any information. Housewife A, however, somehow knew that the crime was arson. Even though that information had not been made public, she knew it was arson because she was the criminal. Number 7. Three Truths Two lies. Five suspects are being interrogated in relation to a crime. Each suspect gives one statement, but it is later revealed that only three of the statements are true, meaning two of the statements are lies. The answer of who committed the crime can be revealed by knowing which statements are true. The statements are as follows. Uncle Jack. Uncle Jim committed the murder. Aunt Mary. I did not do it. Cousin Stuart. It was not Cousin Margaret, Uncle Jim. Uncle Jack was lying when he said I did it. Cousin Margaret, Aunt Mary is telling the truth. Who is the criminal? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Margaret is guilty. Do you not understand why? That's okay. This riddle calls for some backtracking and common knowledge of how riddles work, usually. When someone in a riddle identifies another statement as true or false, it must be taken as the truth and is an important clue. This might be a little confusing, but pay close attention. Uncle Jim and Margaret are telling the truth because they give a clue. They state that Uncle Jack is lying and Aunt Mary is telling the truth. Therefore, Aunt Mary, Uncle Jim, and Cousin Margaret are telling the truth. Uncle Jack is lying. Remember that there were two lies and only one statement remains. Cousin Stuart was lying when he said Cousin Margaret didn't do it, so she is the criminal. Number 6. Call for help. One day I was on an elevator in a high-rise apartment building. Several people loaded onto the elevator and eventually exceeded the maximum weight capacity. Still, no one exited the elevator and it began to ascend to the top floor. 
The cable snapped. It plunged to the bottom and crashed. I was going to call an ambulance, but that wasn't necessary. No one got hurt. Why didn't she call an ambulance? Is it true that no one got hurt? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This one is pretty easy, but it also depends on your opinion of hurt. She didn't call an ambulance because everyone in the accident died, and an ambulance would be, in a way, useless. No one got hurt because they didn't survive. Number 5. Decisions Decisions Imagine that there are three rooms, all completely engulfed in flames. One room is filled with gold, one room is filled with billions of dollars in cash, and one room is filled with cotton. You call for help and an ambulance arrives. Which room do you put out first? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Did you pick the cotton because it would burn faster and fuel the fire? Good idea, but incorrect. The answer is none because an ambulance can't put out a fire. Number 4. The Smuggler Every day a man crosses the border of Mexico into America on a bike. He carries with him two bags filled with sand. Every day the custom officers check his bags and every day they are filled with sand, although the officers are certain that he is smuggling something. They have no evidence and have to let him cross. What is he smuggling? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You probably spent a lot of time trying to figure out what could be mistaken as sand or what could be hidden in the bags. Notice that the riddle says the man crosses the border of Mexico into America, but it never clearly states that he comes back. Furthermore, it doesn't state how he comes back, or if the officers prove he still has the bags. He is smuggling motorcycles and the bags are a distraction. Number 3. Scary Story While my parents were away last night, I read a scary story on a website that I frequently visit. After I finished the story, I was pretty unsettled so I turned on all of the lights in my room and hallway that lead to the bathroom. After I took a shower, I returned to my room and turned on the light when my handbag fell off my chair and startled me. It sure made me jump. Identify what's wrong with this story. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There's not a real answer for this riddle, as there wasn't a specific question. However, there is something wrong with the story to identify. The riddle states that she had turned on all the lights, but after she returns from her shower, it also states that she had to turn the light in her room on if it was already on when she left. Who turned it off? Number 2. Graveyard Two men are walking in a graveyard late at night. One man is named Bill and the other is Pete. Pete walks to a grave and the tombstone reads Charlie. Bill asks, who is Charlie? Pointing to the grave, Pete says, brothers and sisters, I have nine, but that man's father is my father's son. Who is in the grave? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The popular riddle is often guessed incorrectly and can be quite confusing. In this case, we added names to make things easier. That man's father is my father's son. This means that Pete's father is Charlie's grandfather. Since Pete made it clear that he had no brothers and sisters, Charlie is his son. Before we get to number one, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying my narration. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. I'm currently doing a super poll on my Instagram. If you believe ghosts are real, then go to my most recent photo and tap the like button. If you don't, DM me saying why. When you're done, come right back to this video to find out 
about the number one entry. Also, follow me on Twitter at YTChills because that's where I post video updates. It's a proven fact that generosity makes you a happier person. So if you're generous enough to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it, then thank you. This way, you'll be notified of the new videos we upload every Tuesday and Saturday. Number 1. Mysterious Death A man is found dead in his living room, semi-unclothed and in front of a mirror. A police investigation led to the discovery of some awkward evidence. The man's door was locked from the inside, meaning that an intruder could have not come through the door or a window. If so, they would have had no way to lock the door from the inside. There were no signs of struggle in the home or on the man. His pants were lying on the floor with his belt still looped through them. While there was a lot of blood on the scene, which implied murder via a sharp object, forensic investigators could not find a wound on the body. With this confusing combination of facts, the police were unable to solve the mystery. How was the man killed? If you think he was poisoned, don't forget that there was blood on the scene. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. Think you've got it? The man was killed via a fine point weapon on his belt. The killer placed it on the man's belt before he got dressed, and it did not cut him until he took the pants off. In his confusion of bleeding, he fell in his living room and the incision was able to close in a way that medical examiners could not see outside of their lab. This also explains why the door was locked because the suspect was not at the scene. So how did you do? Riddles can be a fun way to challenge your knowledge and creativity, and we hope you found these especially mysterious. Special thanks to Beautiful and Mystery from Wattpad.com for providing these riddles and answers. A link to her complete collection can be found in the description. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Or if you're still not convinced, here are some of our other videos that I think you'd like. Enjoy!